let's hear the snare. Let's quickly hear the snare with everything in bypass. Also the reverbs. Also the compressor and also the EQ. That was the pure snare and I quickly will compensate that in volume. Oh, it's okay. There is some reverb coming from the desk. I'm not bypassing that because that is difficult to get back the right settings and we still might have to do some exports on this. But still I think you can hear how much more little that sounds compared to our real version with compressor, with the EQ. Let's hear it again. Let's quickly show what we have done to it on the K-Deck. Probably just some upper mids. Let's look. There is one step of bass. There is one step of 2K, two or three steps of 3.8K and again one step of 5 and a high shelf. That's what we've done with that. Let's quickly um, hear that. And now I bypass the KDAG EQ. And there is something magical with uh, such a great EQ because although I didn't do a lot, actually the steps on uh, my EQs are modified because uh, normally they would boost 3 dB per step, but that was too much for me, so they boost uh, way less than this. And although that's not a really big change, it gives a lot of freshness to the snare, a lot of uh, a, a crispy sound that would be actually for how I see it impossible to get with a plugin. Because with a plugin, if you add 5 dB of maybe 2 or 5k, you always get harshness. And that is not a mistake by plugins, because that's basically what happens. If you add 2 or 5k's by 5 dB, you get the crispness, yes, but also you get the harshness, because finally harshness is there at this position, so you get harshness. However, with some magic, good, great sounding analog EQ, uh, you get the crispiness, you get the freshness, but no harshness. Then there is 1167 compression. Let's hear that. Uh, so basically, I'll after some hits, I will remove the bypass. If this is like this, no bypass. And if uh, if this is like this, then it's bypassed. And if it's here, it's compressed. Compressed. Let's now hear both together, compression and EQ. We just hear four hits with and then I switch both to bypass. And I think here again, you probably thought it's now a bigger difference in sound than when I only did the EQ in and out or when I did only the compressor in and out. Uh, both were 
I mean, not subtle changes. It's, I mean, you can clearly hear what those things are doing, but both together, it's a really huge change. A fresh, crispy snare and a snare, just as we are used how it sounds if it's recorded in an isolation booth in a little, in a little room. We have to get some freshness. We have to reduce some bits. We have to give a little bit of basses. Otherwise, it doesn't sound good. And if you want to have a snare that is recorded so good that you wouldn't need to do uh, any EQ or any compression. That doesn't happen so often because then uh, you have to really find great sounding rooms that usually in countries like Switzerland or Austria or Germany you don't find so, uh, don't find it. And there is not, nothing wrong with uh, getting it back, uh, whatever is missing with great tools. There is also some digital processing, but I guess not a lot. We have, this is not doing anything. I think that's just here uh, for the rough mix, but we didn't do anything. Uh, then there is a decapitator. which again does just a little bit, uh, gives a little bit freshness. And we have a fab filter EQ to, uh, yeah, at the end in the mix, I probably thought that we still have a little bit too much muddiness and I usually like to correct this with this EQ. Here again, if you just bypass this, it might be subtle. But if you, if you bypass all the free plugins, probably you can hear it better. Because with the decapitator alone, you probably also thought it was subtle. Let's hear all together. And here it's already less subtle. Uh, many subtle differences make big differences at the end. Let's hear it in the mix and we first hear the snare with plugins, with KDEC EQ, with compressor, then I stop quickly and then we will hear it without plugins and then probably again and without the analog stuff and then uh, again with. is without everything now. Life begins full of questions, knowing nothing, then we learn more every day. How about the beep? Life begins full of... Let's put it back in. see that's a more fresh sound it's better it's not a huge difference actually and we could ask the question why is the difference not bigger in the mix uh, that is and that's really important because in jazz or also if it's pop music that is played acoustic the, actually the quality of the snare sound also of the tom sound it's always coming from the overhead microphones and never ever it's coming only for the from the snare microphone the close mics are just to help to get some snap that might be different in other musical genres but in, in in my world where I want to hear the acoustic drum because the guy had a great drum kit so usually you get it from the overhead and you can quickly listen to that here is our overhead That's an important thing in acoustic music. You need to find a way to record a drum so that it sounds basically perfect on the overhead. There is nothing missing here. Even you can hear the bass drum, right? And the only thing that we want from the snare is actually a little bit closeness and snap. So let's mix in the snare.
because in the entire mix, I mean, still the snare should be a little bit behind uh, the singer, but not too much behind. Let's hear it in the mix, everything together, and then I will mute the snare and I will put it back in. That's so important. You clearly see it would basically also work without the snare mic, and that's what it has to. Because if in an acoustic mix it doesn't work with the close mic, then the drum is not good recorded. However, with the mic it's better because he plays, although it's acoustic music, it's also kind of pop, it needs some force. And with the snare microphone, we have more force coming from the snare, there is more support. And that's the, the important stuff. That's why we need to have good sounding close mics, but even better sounding overhead mics. That's the most important stuff. On the overheads, we didn't do a lot. There is a little bit digital EQ. That one here, oh yeah, that's really a little bit, nothing. Uh, there might be some automation, uh, might be that I, yeah, yeah, I remember on ballads where he played with the brushes, I actually just made it a little bit more of uh, under mids so that the overhead sounded warmer. However, when he played with sticks, like in that tune, this EQ is just flat. And that's something I do a lot because in my work, whatever I do on the board or on the outboard, I mean, as you know, there is no total recall on a vintage board, it's not possible. And there is no total recall on an outboard. And every mixer that combines digital and analog technology needs to find a way how he deals with that. So if a ballad has to be mixed here and I want to have some warmth, I cannot do this on the K-Deck because then it doesn't work for the other tunes. So I always try to find my EQ settings on the analog board so that those EQ settings are working for all the songs. The same goes for all my compressors that I have here. Those settings are always working for all my songs. And then uh, I have all songs in one session. I have developed a technique that I can automate on a song by song basis. There is actually a YouTube video where I show this. Uh, and then I can make EQ tweaks from song by song. So this EQ is used, but not in that song. Then uh, we have some, no, uh, actually we don't even have EQ on the k deck because it just sounded perfect. So that is switched to off. Sometimes I do a little bit highs, but not here. We do, however, have compression. And uh, let me quickly see if you have something else. Uh, my inserts here are going to the compressor and it's at 1168 and it's going right back. Now we just have a little bit compression. Why do we do, why do we compress a nice sounding overhead? Let's quickly hear it with and without. And I already explained you why I do it. The point is the drummer has a huge dynamics and if you don't compress it, then all the little details are lost. They are uh, going down to uh, under the level, under the average level of all the other instruments. But in a good mix, we want to preserve the details. One of the most important tasks is to preserve all details. Whatever has been played must play a role in a mix. And that's why we compress. Or in other words, uh, all the high frequencies harmonic, high frequency harmonics that are soft in level get lost without compression. We want to bring them up a little bit. So let's hear it with the compressor and then I switch it to off. Smooth, soft compression, a long attack, uh, medium release. Let's hear it in the mix. Again with the compressor and then I switch it off and then I switch it back in. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's basically all on that drum. Um, we don't look into the tom mics, it's very similar processing than on the snare. Um, there is a mono room microphone, because actually uh, the drum and the piano was recorded in the same room. So we had one room mic for the drum, one for the piano. We can also quickly listen to that thing, which is down here, mono room mic. And there is not a lot of processing. We removed some mids. And on the K-Deck, what did we do to it? Uh, basically nothing and no compression. So it's basically just as it is. Uh, we have a little bit for a theory reverb. However, uh, the main room that you heard, um, is th it's not really only the recording room, because this drum was recorded directly in this control room, by the way. So we have the, the grand piano down there, so the piano player was here, we had the drum, and this room is not huge, obviously, and it wouldn't sound... But you can clearly hear the drum is in a room, it's far away. Uh, however, try. That is not even dry, that's with a little bit 480 room, a nice 480 room. But as you see, the 480 room is not doing so much. Switch it off the 480 room. Now it's totally dry. I switch the 480 room back. And as you can see, this is on a small room, but I, I made it a little bit larger with the settings. That's nice. That's what we expect. That's also what we could do with a plugin. However, do you know any plugin that can do this? Do you know any trick to give real distance like we have here? Uh, probably no. I can tell you there is no plugin that can do this. You can use the best impulse responses by Altiverb, but then you just get uh, basically the impulse response of that room. So you get the answer of the dry signals at the back, but the close, so the, the drum itself won't go to the back. So the only machine that I know that can do this is, is actually the Quantec here, Quantec Room Simulator. And with this machine, something magically happens. The drum is really going from where it was into the space that it creates. All other machines create a space. However, the drum stays where it was. That's also what happens with Altiverb. The drum is still here, close, and then it adds a pre-recorded room. However, with the ground deck, the drum really goes to that. Back end. And that's a great trick to recreate great sounding room microphones if you didn't have a huge drum room. And today, I mean, who has a huge sounding drum room? I mean, those multi million CD selling artists in the United States, they can go to Ocean Way recording to record or to East West or whatever, pay about $4,000 a day. Well, there are huge drum rooms there and then you have it but that's not the normal situation the normal situation is that you have maybe a 50 or 60 square meters room and although you place room mics they won't sound with a lot of distance because there was no distance uh, the quantec gives it back it's a really good investment let's hear it together the overheads with this room and then i will mute the room okay drum overhead and drum room, and then I mute it.
as you can see this gives real space and the artists want the space in this mix and i uh, i automated the volume a little bit so on some tunes i did more on some tunes i did less let's hear it in the mix if you can hear it with room first and then i will mute that room Although it's not a night and day difference, because we also had nice reverbs on the overheads and on the snare, it's very clearly more over on the snare hits that you feel that huge room, that distance, that depth of field behind the speakers, while if we mute it, while it's still not a bad mix, but it's not going so deep. And the, the depth has to come from somewhere. Either it comes from the recording itself, which, as I said, it's not very often the case, or then you need to have the right tools for it. Uh, so that was it basically for the drums. Uh, I did not go through the reverb, but they, there are other tutorials where I uh, teach about reverb. It's basically a precasty on the snare. It's a 480, I think, on the overhead. However, the 480 is also on all the other drum mics I think it's important to have one general reverb for the drum and then maybe something more for the snare also the bass drum is going to that reverb which is very important in acoustic music uh, I know there are some engineers saying the bass drum should never have reverb but the rules are always stupid and uh, in my world I always use reverb for the bass drum too you just need to have a good reverb so in the next video we go on with bass and with all the rest